Hi, George. Hi, everyone. Morning. So, um, what we wanted to do with you uh, for this section is, I've obviously been working with a number of our frog schools, and we don't really want to give you a product tour. What we want to do is show you one of our schools, Greenshaw High in Sutton, who've been doing a huge amount of work and a huge amount of thinking, just like the other schools we've heard from today. But it's that thinking that we want to capture. Now, a couple of times in this, we'll, we'll be showing you a few of the features of frog, but it's really just about that's how we've facilitated everything. But as I say, it's more about about that thinking. George has done an awful lot of that thinking and worked with his senior team around that. So George is, is perfectly placed to take us through that. Um, there's been a couple of things that's also been mentioned specifically, uh, and I'm thinking of feedback, and um, we'll show you a bit of that too, just so you understand what that product is or that product element is that we're referring to. But George, if you'd like to uh, share your screen and we can get started. Yes, of course. Let me share that screen there with you all. Um, there we go. Uh, okay, so yeah, what we're seeing here is, um, as Graham said, we'll take you through some of the um, sort of key functions of our sort of parental engagement um, platform, really. So what you're seeing here on the screen is what a parent would see when they log into Frog for the first time. Um, and it's their kind of main dashboard. I did mention earlier in the chat actually about um, we actually promote the Frog app and the phone experience a lot more than the desktop version. Um, just as other speakers said earlier, you know, the, the main engagement for parents these days is normally their phone screen. Um, so that's why we've gone through kind of a, as you can see on the screen, very much an, a layout based on apps really. Um, so we have like, you try to mirror that basically for a parent. And the thing that struck me the first time I saw the parent dashboard is just how spartan it is. You've got so very few links, um, yeah. but I'm guessing that's been a deliberate choice. Yeah, that's right. So in the past, we've had to roll out other systems to parents, um, and that can be quite overwhelming. Um, you know, we've got such a wide range of ability. Um, like people said earlier on, I think it might be Martin that said that you got to really train the parents really to do all this kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it looks quite sparse, um, but that is is intentional. So um, I'd really like to dive in. Uh, uh, earlier on, it was mentioned uh, by Andy Davison about my child. But before we do that, I'd just like to dive into some of the, the simpler functions, if we can. Um, yeah. And I'm saying that because I know. But uh, I see that you've got an update my details one on the parent dashboard. Could you just show us what that looks like? Yeah, so that was something that was kind of um, a bit of a brainchild of our main school office, actually. Um, so they were getting, um, probably at the start of the year normally, around this kind of time in September time, they get a lot of calls um, from parents or emails around, oh, I've got a new mobile number, or I've got a new email address, we, we've moved house, that kind of stuff. And um, that stuff can get lost in translation, because normally what happens is you'd get a phone call from a parent, put on a post-it note, oh, Mr. Bloggs has got a new phone number, um, and it might just sit there for a week. Whereas this system now allows the parents to go onto the dashboard, click on update their details, fill the short form in. As soon as they hit submit, it goes to the office team for them to action. Um, so it's kind of been the one place you do that. Um, and if they do get calls saying, oh, I've got a new phone number, we we'll obviously try and encourage them to go to this page. But it just means that you're not having to read anybody's handwriting. You're not having to pick up any yeah. notes. You're, yeah. you're, you're streamlining the process. And ideally, if a parent has come up with... Um, a ridiculously new email address then at least you're not having to work out exactly yeah. what what's a letter and what's a number in it you exactly. can just yeah. copy and paste it um i think on the similar vein i'm guessing then that letters is also about streamlining yeah that's right so letters is again a really basic page um but it gives us the opportunity to create a bit of a, a letters bank for our parents so you know when, when we could do things when we can go on trips and when we could do events inside school um, traditionally you send the letter out you know the usual kind of tear the form off fill it out kind of thing um, it never works because if you send it home with the child it never gets home um, and if you email it it gets lost in parents inboxes um, so this is an area where we would put all of our school letters organized by year group um, and that's just a much more proficient way of, of firstly getting the letters out there but secondly managing an archive of them too so it's not just, ah, oh, that's interesting, because I, I remember being told off uh, for leaving school letters at the bottom of my school bag. Yeah. Um, but it's you're actually using this as the primary communication now to say there's a letter on the parent portal. 
Yeah, that's right. So we would still um, we would still communicate to parents and say, you know, this trip is happening. For example, um, you'll find the letter on this section of frog. Um, so it gets them into the platform. So if nothing else, and I, again, not the focus, but the you're thinking around this, you must be saving an awful lot in printing uh, uh, and letter and staff time preparing yeah, and folding yeah, time, letters. Time is the biggest thing. Like obviously to claim back money and to keep that is fantastic. But to save some office staff having to sit there and stuff envelopes and print out tutor group lists and things like that, it just saves a hell of a lot of time for them. Yeah. Which is, you know, something that's always going to be a priority no matter what's happening. Um, now, as I say, right at the start of the, the, the webinar, Andy was mentioning about how uh, the My Child uh, feature had been released in the yeah. Earheart release. And I know that it, it's so new for schools, especially this year, that a lot of them haven't seen it yet. So could we just have a quick look at uh, your My Child, please? Yeah, so My Child has been really powerful for us. So I'm logged in here as a dummy student for GDPR reasons. Um, but I have got a few screenshots here of an actual an actual child and parent account. Um, so here's how it would look regularly to a parent logging in. So the assignment calendar, um, I think we're gonna come back to shortly to have a look at some of those assignments, but that's quite key for all year groups. Going forward, things, even basically things like having the timetable in there for parents. Um, this traditionally works really well for our sixth form families. So if you've got a year 13 student who claims they've got a free period and they've turned up at 10 o'clock back at home, you can go, well, no, you haven't actually, you've, you, you've got English now, why are you here? Um, so that's quite nice. And that also leads on to this bit as well is around the attendance stuff too. So again, really, really nice for um, for all your groups to see that. But we've had a lot of feedback from our A-level students um, families around. They can actually see subject by subject attendance as well, um, which is really nice. Now, that's interesting because we've, you know, in the panel discussion, we had two um, younger year schools in, uh, both talking about sort of the, the need for uh, getting constructing or structuring their child's day but yeah. actually you're finding that you need to have just as much focus at the sixth form level yeah that's right yeah i mean i would say that I and mean, we spoke about this before graham me and you but i think sixth form is our biggest um eyes on screen numbers for for, for whole the whole front platform um they're so independent as students um but they do need something like this for their parent just to have that little kind of overview of what's actually going on inside school so yeah the attendance stuff here for our sixth form families has been really, really powerful. Well, but now the other aspect of what I'm seeing and sort of what we wanted to demonstrate where, and certainly when George first showed me his parent portal is the fact that when parent, this is what parents are seeing. So when they're logging in, not only do they have the convenience of the updating details and letters, but they've got their child's, all their child's homework calendar all in one place, mm -hmm. their registration. I can see that they've got documents connected to the SIMS linked, uh, uh, documents connected to their MIS. Yeah. So again, it's providing that one-stop shop that you, you've done so that parents aren't having to log into multiple different places, which again, I think came up uh, from what John was saying in the panel discussion about how he wanted to make sure all their communication was was via one platform, in their case, Frog. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So the documents is a really good um, example because um, there's no other way in our school to get a child's report unless you go onto their, onto your, your Frog parent account. There's no other way of doing it. I um, mean, you know, parents might even say, oh, I just can't log in. Can you send it to me? I'm going to be quite reluctant to do that and just say, actually, no, in a, in a nice way. Um, here's how you get into your account, you know, provide some support over the phone, videos on the website to train them through it. But actually, I'd say once they've done it once, they go, oh, actually, this is, this is quite easy. And again, with the app, um, parents love the app because you log into it once and that's it. Um, so I'd, when we look at the analytics of the, the platform, we do see now that the majority of parents are accessing things like reports through their phone rather than through an actual laptop or a PC. That's interesting. So again, it's, it's about that convenience, isn't it? Yeah. Can we just jump back to either the, probably just the real assignment calendar, if you don't yeah. mind. But uh, again, I remember, and we, we published a story from uh, you, and I'll post it in the link after this chat, mm -hmm. about how you using the assignment calendar during lockdown uh, that the UK was under for structuring the school day. But then you're also, looks like you're continuing to do that to an extent. Yep, so um, the students also obviously get their calendar as well, but we use our um, the assignment calendar here to structure the whole of the week's homework. So I'll just bring up um, a homework schedule for us here. This is our homework schedule for the whole school. So we managed to implement, not just because of lockdown, this is, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, 
we've had this homework ske- uh, schedule centralised for the whole school um, across the whole week. Obviously, they get Fridays off, but Monday to Thursday, um, all the year groups participate in very similar homework. Um, it might look like a lot, but if you look, for example, here, year seven, eight on a Monday, there's quite a lot of tasks here. But if you look, they're only 15 or 10 minutes um, and there's uh, just over an hour each night of homework. Um, the big one here is CKS, which I'll come back to shortly. So I've got a live example of that. Um, but one of the main things, again, it's been a bit of a um, point today across all the different talks, is that we use all of these platforms here, but the students can't get to them platforms or even know what tasks they're meant to do in Hegarty Maths, for example, unless they go through Frog first. Um, so we assign the tasks for Hegarty Maths inside frog and we just put a direct link to them to then log into it and i think that's a really important message and it's a message that you helped us structure actually george from yeah. years ago in and if you go into our homework course on the community you'll find that we repeat this message by having one place for the homework to go into children and parents know exactly what they have to do but where no point is frog or uh, restricting teachers to one system and i can see here you're using ixl english and tasamai yeah. and, and 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 so on uh and that's planned in so you're giving each teacher and each subject their flexibility but yeah, you're making fine. sure that the children only have one place to go yeah that's right exactly so these platforms here like hegarty maths and tasamai Tassimize for science and they do that extremely well because all they do is focus on the science curriculum and we wouldn't ever not want to use it. However, we can't just give a load of links to the kids and go, good luck. We just use Frog as that one place for everything. Now, I'm just keeping an eye on the questions that are coming in on the side. Mm -hmm. um, there was, if we could just jump back momentarily to your frog, if that's okay, just yeah. to, to make sure that we've answered those questions. Yeah. Uh, there was one uh, from Sue Busher about, oh, about, um, yes, there are rules and, and sharing, and I, I am working on something, Sue, so I might be able to show you that. But Sue was also asking about registration and attendance detail. Well, that's pulled in. Depending on the MIS system you use, we can pull in different information. And SIMS is the one that gives us the most information. So we can, with Frog Parent as an add-on, we can pull in that information and display it. A few people have uh, had their eye caught by your uh, your crystal menu, and um, oh, yeah. this is a custom theme that uh, that Greenshaw commissioned from Frog's designers. So it is entirely possible to make your platform look exactly like you want it to look. But if you work, and you can build it yourself, but in I think in George's case, they they went to our design team for that. Yeah. But uh, that was just to sort of make sure I was answering the questions. A few, yeah. interestingly, we've got a few comments as well. Other people are doing exactly the same as you and having that homework structure and giving everyone that flexibility. Yeah, that's great. That's brilliant. Yeah. Could we now switch over to the teacher view um, uh, yeah. so we can see what it looks like for teachers? Because one of the big challenges I think that especially the UK schools are facing right now, but I sh I'm sure it's a worldwide issue, is that um, teachers are having to make sure they're still teaching in the classroom, uh, get their class through that work, but also they've got to prepare work for the children who are self-isolating. And I know George has been doing some thinking around that. So um, yes, if, if we could start having a look at, at that side of it, please, George. Yeah, that's right. So we've got, um, we've been quite lucky where we are. So we're based in Sutton, which is actually, if you look at the list of London boroughs, we're pretty much at the bottom of COVID cases, which is fantastic. Um, so we've actually not had whole year groups off. Or we've not had to send home lots of students. Um, at the moment, we have about 34 students isolating across the whole school. So that's 34 out of 1,800 students that have to isolate. Um, so actually, it's actually quite positive. However, um, we do have to provide, obviously, that work for them. So um, if I go into this section here, if I go into teaching and learning and go to isolation, what you're going to see here is one for each year. So as a teacher... Um, it's my responsibility to load on some work for the students in my classes that might be isolating. So I go into the year 10 one, for example. The students will get a basic timetable on the front page. Um, obviously, they haven't got to follow it, but it's just nice to give them some guidance. Um, and then at the top of there, we've got the subjects. The first button here, the second button, is upload resources. Only staff can see this. So if I go into this section here, it means that I can, as a teacher, go on, find my subject and upload my resources into that area. Um, it's really easy to do, really, really basic. That then obviously pulls through um, into a subject page. So something like food, for example. 
Um, here's really, really simple lessons on the left, resources on the right hand side. Um, so it's really, really easy for the students. They literally read it here and they go, right, um, read the carbohydrates PowerPoint, make notes and answer questions. They just find it over here and read through it. So it's not that interactive, but at the moment it hasn't actually got to be um, because we can't afford to plough a load of time into this section of frog for 34 kids. Um, but obviously, if we do go onto rotor systems and closing down bubbles, um, it's going to be a lot more interactive and a bit more like our kind of lockdown lessons. But what you've done is you've made it so that the, the, the classroom teacher has a facility to get this out. The children who are self-isolating, I take it you're, you're showing them this process to go through. Yeah. Um, and then, yes, <laughs> teachers who are, I don't, I, it's, it's hard to imagine many professions that are as busy as teachers are right now. Uh, and obviously, you know, healthcare workers aside, um, but you're providing an, a simple route for them to get through that and clear directions for the students as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So when these students, um, if they tell us they need to isolate or we tell them they have to isolate, um, they will receive um, a phone call from their year team um, who will then talk them through this page here. Um, so not all students can see this area. Um, the year team adds them into a, a special group on Frog that then makes this content appear for them. Um, so it is only visible for them students. But yeah, we do give them a bit of a hand-holding session. Most kids just go, oh yeah, it's fine. I know how to use it already, which is great. Um, but others need a bit more help that's great now the next thing that we we plan to show you uh, and george and i had to have a bit of a brainstorm about this is we uh, it had already been referred to several times the, the the feedback system but we can't show you george's feedback tool within his assignments because of naturally because of gdpr that would show you student names and their class arrangements so we had a bit of a brainstorm and what i've done is i'm just going to start moving my screen over is i've set up a whole list of dummy students and dummy assignments and we'll make that large and hopefully you can see that there so this is a i'm logged in as a teacher on our uh, platform and i've got all my assignments here i've actually got them organized into uh classes as well so i can see the assignments there but we there's been a lot of uh, mentions of, of feedback today so we prepared something here as well and i'd set my homework and i'd ask the students to, ha to hand in in this case they had to um i can go into it and show you but in this case they had to prepare a london underground style map of their hometown uh with a couple of transport links and there was things that they had to do to make sure that they completed so when i close that down i can go into abby uh, and I can see that Abby has actually taken a photo of her work. Actually, this was a digital one. She's digitally prepared a, a feedback and I can click on it and open it here. Now, what this does is it will take Word documents and PowerPoints and convert them into images. Uh, but it will also take images, obviously. And I can, as a teacher, I can go in and I can start leaving comments and stickers, which is a simple case of I can just drag this in there. And you can see I've even got the ability to add uh, audio recordings in here too, making it really quite simple. I think possibly the most useful bit, if there was one, is, you know, this is meant to be a tube map. So this should have been a square line. And I can do that and I can annotate so uh, Abby's work and she can see that back. So that was how we have always imagined feedback working, taking a digital document and being able to mark it online. But if I just cancel that for now, then our school started showing us the other way of doing this. And I think this is the, the one that's been referred to more, where students are preparing work in their exercise books, taking a photo of it and handing it in digitally. So the teachers are still able to do that marking of physical work, but with that whole digital air gap from the students' uh, workbooks. So we've spoken to a few schools who have gone through all sorts of hoops of uh, having to collect in the workbooks from children and put them in a drawer for two days and then get them out and mark them. And then they go back in to, to create that gap, to create that uh, COVID bubble, if you like, a COVID secure environment. But instead, I can go onto this photo and I can just start. I've already left a label there, actually. Uh, 
didn't uh, this student didn't label her axes here but I can go on and I can just tick where appropriate I can leave comments where appropriate and because the students are again doing this via their devices we've got an app that allows you to take photos and send them straight into their assignments it's a really quick and simple way to make sure that the children are doing all this work and getting it marked rather than it just being one of these uh, one-way systems where you're pushing out work to the students to keep them busy. Uh, so we just wanted to make sure that we covered that and, and showed you that. But um, George, while I was preparing this with George, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and ask George to share his again, is George then showed me the next thing that he's been working on. And it's not really got that much to do with parental engagement. And it's not, it, George, this is obviously the independent study area. And yeah. it's just so cool. It's so impressive that I, I wanted to share it with you. And George has very uh, kindly agreed to sort of talk us through this. And it's all, again, it's another thing that, yes, Frog makes work, but it could be done anywhere. This isn't about it being all about um, selling you Frog. This is about just showing you the thinking that the school's been doing around it. Yeah, so this is our um, independent study area here. So this is a bit of a, a brainchild of... Um, one of our assistant head teachers and myself, we sort of thought, what can, what can we do to really bridge the gap for our current year 11 students um, who lost out a hell of a lot of GCSE teaching last year? Um, so the plan is, is to create an independent study area for every single core subject and then option subject too. This is how one would end up looking. So we've um, focused our efforts on English for now, just as an example. Um, so we took it to SLT and they said, yeah, plow, plow along, uh, ahead with it, really. Um, as a student, I can log on to this section here, click on English, and I can see all of my topics here. So I've got Inspector Calls, Macbeth, and Jekyll and Hyde. Um, there's also poetry to add in there too. So if I think, actually, I need to focus on the main characters in Inspector Calls, for example, I can then choose in the subtopics here the main characters section. Before I go into that and show you it, there is a knowledge checker on the front page here. So I can see there's one of these for every single subtopic of an inspector course. And I can tick off here on the list that actually the three review cycles for each part of um, part of knowledge. I can say actually I'm really comfortable learning about Mrs. Burling, Sheila and the inspector, for example. Um, and I can add some notes in here about what I need to follow up on. But I can use that as a, as a student to keep a log of what I know and what I need to work on. If I go into the main characters section here, here is a page for every single main character in Inspector Calls. So Mr. Burling here, for example, they'll follow exactly the same, um, the same structure for all the different subjects. So there's the first thing is a video, um, and this is a, about a six minute video by one of our teachers. So they've just recorded themselves talking about that character as they would in a lesson, um, and that's gone on there. Then we've got two sets of flashcards for the students. Um, so again, we've built this to work nicely on the phone, so it actually feels like an actual flashcard. Um, so you've got the recall flashcards, which are very much kind of question-answer. So for example, how is Burling described in the initial stage directions? There's the answer, and you can flick through those and go through the flashcards. And the extend questions are more kind of big thinking questions. So what's and why's really. Um, so those are there for the students to, to look at. We've also then got a quiz for each of those sets of flashcards. Again, that helps the student go over it again, but even better for us is we can also monitor who's done them quizzes and what scores they're getting to. So there's a quiz for each set of flashcards. They can also then upload a picture of the written notes. So the idea is when they watch the video, they actually make something called Cornell Notes, um, which is just a way of dividing the page up. Um, they'll upload a photo of their actual notes they've written in their book. And the last one is the apply section. So this is kind of more of an extended answer question. So the student gets the question here and they can then write their answer in the box and save that. Um, they can also come back to that at any time if they want to as well um, to actually edit that question too. So that's all, that's kind of one example there of how it's gonna look for the rest of the subjects. Um, but we're getting there with English just as our starting point really. And I think that's really interesting and, and, and great to see. And what it strikes me is it's the it's sort of the culmination of the journey you've been working through uh, where you you start with your homework calendar telling the year sevens what they're going to get every day or telling their parents just as much what they're going to get every day. Then you're providing yeah. them with the places to go for the, the self-isolation and you're encouraging that independence from an early age. And this will then take them through to 
to a real in a really powerful independent study resource and george i just think that that what you've been sharing with us is is amazing and thank you very much for doing so no it's a pleasure i also um i spoke to one of our deputy heads last night who's, who's running the project and he said that he's obviously happy for any other schools that want to either work with us on this um or actually want to get involved in it somehow just just let us know and we can always work together on it too well, that's great. And I can see Lucy has joined us in the bottom corner. So um, I'm going to thank you again, George. If anybody awesome. has seen anything technical, then uh, you can drop me a line. But we've already, but I'll hand over to Lucy to, to sum up. But thank you. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, George, so much. That's Again, you're, you've, you've been mirroring everything that everybody has been saying for the last hour and a half today, which is about keeping it simple, keeping it straightforward, getting a baseline of the technical ability of all of your stakeholders and delivering something that is accessible. And I think the simplicity of your approach, it kind of, it, it, it looks very simple, but underneath all of that very simple interface, there's so much going on there to engage students, to engage parents and to make life easier for teachers. And I'm sure your teachers there very much appreciate what you've put in place for them to help them deliver their 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 to do their job in such yeah. difficult circumstances. So thank you for joining us. Thank you My both. Pleasure. You. Thank you. Thanks, thank guys. You. Okay, bye. So um, that's the end of our webinar today. We will be sending out copies of this. Um, if you go onto the Frog Education website. There is a link to the um, real world learning series where you can see some more stories from other schools out there. And there's also um, a white paper that has been published based on the previous Frog 20, which again highlights and has links to lots of other stories from around the world from our schools and from not just Frog schools, but from many schools. So thank you again for taking the time out and Thank you all again for the hard work that you have been doing in uh, teaching our kids and, and keeping, keeping things going in these difficult times. So there will be a few folk that are staying around just on the chat uh, for a little bit longer uh, if you have any further questions. But in the meantime, thank you very much and bye.